Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. And it's my great pleasure to welcome to today's program, Frederick Frimbell, who is the head of logistics customer collaboration and sustainability programs at CHEP EMEA. And today we're going to talk about making transportation collaboration work. And this is one of those topics that is always of huge interest to shippers, um, particularly today as they're trying to look for different ways to mitigate some of the capacity constraints or they're looking for ways to be uh, more green or more sustainable um, and really uh, you know, find new and improved ways to be more efficient and find productivity gains and cost savings as well. So uh, very excited to have uh, Frederick here today with us to you know, share some of his perspective and success story uh, that he's experienced there at, at CHEP. Uh, just a reminder that part of our goal here at Talking Logistics is to make this um, uh, uh, conversational. So if you do have a question uh, for Frederick as we're having our conversation here, you can do so via the uh, post a question comment or the chat feature, and I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on it. And if it's a you know good and appropriate question, and we have time, I'll I'll certainly weave it into the uh, conversation. Uh, last thing, if you are joining us as a visitor, you will have to uh, sign up first in order to be able to ask a question. So with that, Frederick, welcome to the program. And so good morning, everyone. So I know that in the UK it's the morning, and in, in Europe, I'm calling you from France. It's at the end of uh, the afternoon, but uh, it's a really a pleasure to share with you what we've done and our passion for collaboration. Excellent. Well, F Frederick, to get started and kind of before we dive into the topic, you know, tell us briefly about your career path. I mean, how and why did you get involved in supply chain logistics and, and what's your current role and responsibility there at CHEP? Okay, uh, when I was young, I were really, really interested in optimization and uh, and as well, I had the passion for organization. So once I finished my, my study with my diploma of organization for companies, I enter in transport company to, to, to work on uh, transport organization because I was sure that we could optimize a lot uh, what was engaged in terms of companies, transportation role. And it is something I've done during um, 15 years. And the 10 uh, following years, I enter in the 3PL companies working as well on optimization. And I work for CHEP for 10 years now on, and uh, I've been a logistic director in France for about eight years. And uh, from 2012, I'm now the head of uh, logistic collaboration across Europe. Really, really. Great, great. I mean, I, I find it interesting that y your title has collaboration, you know, in it, which I think is a, uh, kind of a testament, if you will, in terms of the focus that you have on, on collaboration. So, so let's start with that. Let's start now by, by providing some, some context, if you will. I mean, I'm sure that many people are familiar with CHEP, uh, but just in case, you know, uh, give us some, you know, an overview of the company and, and your, log your logistics operations there in Europe. Well, CHEP is a, comp a company uh, from, from Bonders. And Brambles is now in focus on uh, pooling, uh, pooling activity. So CHEP uh, has a puller, pallet puller uh, role is to, to deliver pallet to the customers. When these pallets are uh, loaded from their uh, good manufacturer, they are delivered to the retailers. At this time, they send to CHEP declarations in order to stop the, the daily fee. It's interesting to have this information because we will reuse the declaration from customers to know their flows and to organize for the, the collaboration. Once pallets are empty at retailers, we are collecting this pallet to be inspected or repaired at our plant. And once they are uh, ready for use, we re-deliver this pallet to the customer. So it's a uh, bit uh, with our pallet. And most of the time, the same one, which is avoiding to, to, to cut trees and so on and so on. One of the pulling aspects. So, so what kind of uh, you, you know what kind of volumes are we talking about there in, in 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 the Europe? I mean, what kind of how many of these shipments do you make? Yes, in fact, we are covering 22 uh, countries across Europe. We have 200, around 200 chip plants across Europe. We manage uh, three, three, if I remember, two, sorry, 241 million pallets a year. That represents 4,600 trucks per day. We are managing uh, all logistic operations from 11 of it to 
as your app. And this uh, is allows us to deliver 17,000 customers. We collect uh, more than 100,000 retailer locations. Our annual expense is uh, three, 330 million dollars uh, for four years. And globally, we are managing 1.5 million students a year, more or less. Great, great. So, you know, certainly a, a, a very large network, you know, a lot of volume, you know, involved there. Um, so let's talk now about, you know, the collaboration and, and kind of the, the collaboration project that you've been uh, involved with, you know, over the past few years there at, uh, at CHEP. Can you give us a, a, a kind of a brief overview about it and, you know, how it works and, and the different parties involved? Yeah, but first of all, I should start by the, the definition of collaboration, which can be difficult or simple, so let's go uh, simply if possible. So I should say that the action of working with somebody or with someone to produce something, more or less. So working with, with, with anybody you can, you can find, collaborate, it's, can it can be considered as collaboration because you are going to produce something. Uh, globally, uh, globally, the, the the goal is to reuse the, the 20 miles the customer trucks could have coming back to their factory uh, after, after a delivery. So the aim of collaboration is really to be informed of what are the empty miles the customers are doing and to try to reuse their trucks to either do a collection, a chip collect, pallet collection or a chip delivery. Sometimes ask customers to pick up their pallets at our plant in order to avoid the check to send a truck to deliver the to deliver the pallet, can work as well on uh, international uh, deliveries, long distance or multimodal as well. Multimodal is really interesting because most of the time, when customers send pallet to a foreign country, the trains come back empty, and due to our network density, most of the time we can reuse this, these uh, trains deliver our pallet or to relocate our pallet from one country to another. That's why collaboration is really, really important. And for that, we have built a team, a team I manage, uh, who is working with different customers at domestic level, taking into account the country constraints, uh, and they have to work closely because collaboration is possible because you bring the that, that can bring a lot of things. Now, you know, uh, I'm, I'm intrigued by this, uh, the, the team that you, that you build. Um, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that um, um, uh, later. But, um, you know, what, what were the kind of the driving forces, you know, to, to form this team and to collaborate in, in the first place? I mean, what, what, what led you to really pursue this? If we have a look first at the transportation market evolution or what we expect as an evolution, we are, we are quite sure that we are going to see the demand uh, going up due to uh, retailers' constraints, uh, well legislation and so on, and uh, quick, quick uh, delivery uh, required from, from, from their customers, from the customers of our money. And on the other way, the demand, so I, I mean the number of truck availability is going to be reduced due to legislation constraints, due to as well uh, some transport com company going to bankruptcy, due to uh, legislation on driving hours and so on. So the gap is increasing year on year. And we, the question we ask at CHEP is how can we close the gap in order to provide uh, an additional service, same service or a better one to our customers to avoid the uh, gap between orders and delivery. It is something we are, we are really, really involved in analysis. So this is the first thing. And uh, as well, so working for a long time, close, very close to the customer, we, we know that customers are seeking continuous improvements because they have already negotiated better rates with, uh, with customers. But as they want, as they need, So they are additional, uh, and this can come from the other 
Kip as a strong supplier. We have uh, we have been successful uh, in uh, reducing supply chain costs in, uh, in doing transport collaboration. We are going to see some 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 results in particular, and as well in moving MTLS, we are we can allow customers to reduce their own costs as we are also sharing the savings. Now, you know, so it sounds like, you know, there is this, um, uh, just like we are experiencing here in, in the United States, this, um, you know, uh, a growing gap between supply and demand with capacity. So it sounds like that's a, a similar uh, uh, situation there in Europe in terms of capacity becoming a, a, a bigger issue uh, and, and be, you know, being constrained. And then it sounds like just you know, the the overall opportunities that companies are looking for from a cost and sustainability and productivity standpoint. I should say the additional issue we have in Europe is that we are, as I said before, managing 22 countries. So we have 22 different legislation, sometimes different money. Uh, money sorry. Uh, Money. You have the euro and so on, uh, and it's really difficult to manage because people is not working in the same way. So when we manage a collaboration at a European level, so I mean when we talk to customers with as a Coca Cola, Procter Gamble, and so on, we need to be aligned whatever the country we collaborate with. That's why the role of uh, managing the relation in collaboration with the European CEO is really key because we can produce standard uh, collaboration, whatever, if, if it's in Italy, in Germany. So it's really key to have the same approach, whatever the country we work with. Right, right. So, you know, what, one of the challenges, um, you know, that I often hear from companies, you know, they're looking to collaborate is, is, you know, identifying the right partners, right, the right companies to collaborate with. You know, what, what was your process in, in finding the right partners? I should say, first of all, both those companies need to be 100% engaged in collaboration. Collaboration is a long way, uh, but if they are not totally engaged in collaboration, collaboration will never happen. We are going to see that we have a different step to succeed in collaboration, but if the, manage, the, 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 the top management is not engaged, it cannot happen. So uh, how we have identified the, the, the collaboration to collaboratories, so we have to select the one that are really believing in collaboration and secondly we know to we have to identify what kind of flows can match with chat flows because we talk uh, on collaboration but uh, once it is done we need to prove that this is feasible we have developed a tool at chat managing all customer declarations so I mean we have all we know the flows of our customers and we have developed a tool that can match these flows with the with chip one. So this tool allows to identify matching lanes. Once this is done, we can identify savings, ring cost, and we have a different meeting with customer in saying, hey customer, we have identified flows we can work in collaboration with you, and this can save a lot of X amount of money. We have X amount of flows per year with a percentage of discounts loaded. So most of the time we have discounts loaded above 95% matching lane. So I very, very few answers that mean savings for sure. Like the road the vehicle feel more or less is 80, 85%. So once you are above 95, you are sure you can get savings. So this tool has been built a uh, few, few months ago, I should say. And you already get a lot, lot of results. You can identify what, what you want. One customer with chat flows, all customers with chat flows, and as well, you can identify it's something really important to time. Where, with which customer, we don't know. Now, with this tool, we can identify the, the customer, 
So, so this tool is—is is this something that you, um, you know, is this a transportation management system? Is this a tool you developed in house? Are you using a third-party solution for this? No, it's something we have developed internally. Lean Logistic is working as well to 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 be linked with our TMS because we use Lean Logistic as a TMS for all chip uh, L chip uh, company. So it's something that needs to be absolutely linked with our uh, transportation system. You can see further with uh, with a trusty role how it can be used for that. Great, great. So so it sounds like what you've done what you've done is kind of taking a look at your uh, you know the different uh, the the flow of, of of the pallets and the flow of the uh, the products between the different entities and really trying to identify whether there's some good backhaul opportunities or continuous move opportunities. And then that becomes kind of the starting point for the conversation. Yeah, but in fact, the tool allows us to, to identify uh, to identify the different matching lanes we can we can work with the customer. So we have standard organization which which uh, which includes five different steps. The first one, as we have just said, is to identify the flow and to present to the customer our strategy in terms of collaboration. We have a team. We have an organization. We have tools, and we are really working on collaboration since five years. And the, the third step is what we call the negotiation. What, when we have identified the, the, the different lanes, we have to take into account some, some important thing as constraints. For us. This customer uses refrigerated trucks. It's very difficult for us to use it because we need uh, uh, trailers with the curtain side. In order to load the maximum of pallets, so sometimes frigo, frigo trucks are not, are not allowed. As well, delivery constraints. To make, to make a round trip, we need to match all the constraints in order to see if it's possible or not. We cannot deliver at night and load uh, 12 hours after. We have a lot of constraints, and this take, take a lot of time. Once we have identified that, we make a tender with the customer in order to find the best the, the best rate with the different carriers and once this is done we can start a pilot when, when pilot is done and check the, the quality we check the cost if it's aligned with our start the second so the five main steps of the collaboration yeah, no, those are, uh, you know, so it sounds like you, you've really, you know, um, obviously with all the years of experience that you have doing this, you know, have identified those those five key, you know, those five key steps. So, you know, uh, what is the, what's been the net result? You know, what have been some of the, the benefits or some of the, the um, you know, achievements that you've accomplished over the past few years? Uh, we are, we, we have more or less uh, six, uh, I should say six, um, Main, main topics because uh, to, 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 to get okay, I'm sorry. So, uh, so we, we have six main topics, I should say. First is improved truck, uh, truck utilization. Uh, and, and for sure, we have, uh, we have a cost reduction which is linked with the use of, of this data uh, truck utilization. So customer satisfaction is uh, one of the key, key things, key important things. So auto reductions, and uh, as well ensure capacity during the peak period. And it's the case in summer in, in Europe when we have a lack of truck. When we've already built a round trip on a day-to-day -day basis, for sure we, we can you can cover the, the, the peak period without any issue. And this is uh, very, very, very important to deliver on time and customer satisfaction. And for sure, we extend the partnership with our customer because allowing them to reduce their cost, to increase their, their service level, and to and to get satisfied. For sure, it's we we build we come from a supplier position, I should say, to uh, to a partner position, which is absolutely key for our for our business. So, in terms of uh, result, we've got uh, last year. Uh, so we 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 started collaboration with 70. Representing 254 lanes, and that is representing as well 53,000 different shipments. Uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, avoidance of MT distances, we have saved 2.8 kilometers one year of the work. That's lead to uh, uh, CO2 emissions 2.6 uh, 2,600 tons of CO2 emission, which is great for sure. This is our global result. For sure, we've got as well in terms of uh, of savings. Those are all, you know, uh, pre pretty impressive, uh, you know, results, you know, from from a variety of different, you know, angles. Uh, I, I think what's interesting is, you know, the uh, the assurance of capacity during those, uh, you know, peak periods. I mean, I think that's a, that's where a lot of, uh, you know, certainly a lot of shippers are are focused on, you know, today. And reusing the same truck allows the retailer or the the customer uh, to have the use of the same driver and the same truck. They arrive always at the same times and so on. So we've got a strong regularity in uh, transport uh, organization. This is very very well perceived by customers. So so um, so so what's next? I mean, are, are you looking to expand the program or you know kind of take collaboration to a different level? Yeah, so uh, so getting such results as we have just seen in collaborations for sure it's very is very exciting. But if we only want to 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 cross our flows with our customers, so I mean one customers with chef flows, is a little bit restrictive. So we imagine how can we do, do we do better? Uh, what what can what could we do uh, in the next future? So we have identified that customer. Agree to collaborate together as Jeff is doing with uh, our own customers, and uh, we are entering in a, a trusty, uh, trusty uh, program. So, trustee is the a role of an independent company um, working to match flows between customers in order to get savings, to reduce CO2 emission, and to reduce miles. So, the the the, the opportunity Jeff Jeff have. Knowing uh, all all customer declaration is very very well perceived by the, by our customer because we know all our customer flows and using the new tool we've developed is very useful for us to say to a customer, hey customer, you can you can have a matching lens from this country to this uh, one with uh, this with this customer or with this other one. And you have a strong strong opportunity, and we have started to to play this uh, role. So Age, to identify with a K FMCG manufacturer in Europe to, to work with all chip customers to identify new lanes, matching lanes, and it's working very well because we have identified. You know, I, I love the word you know trustee because I think they're um, you know embedded in that word is is trust. And, um, you know, th th that is certainly such a key component to, you know, making collaboration work, obviously. And, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that kind of the role that you're playing uh, is uh, uh, a representative of, of what is required, in my opinion, to make collaboration work, which is, you know, a, a trusted, neutral third party that kind of can, um, you know, bring the parties together that um, you know could benefit the most from from working together. Uh, uh, do you agree with that? Yeah, yes, and you, you're totally right in saying that trust is one of the key words in, in collaboration. So I should say that two words are really important in collaboration. So trust and engagement. Because each customer is quite sure that collaboration can bring in savings. But we need to work in um, just the environment and uh, 100 percent collaboration between companies. You know, we, we, we're kind of getting short on time here, but uh, before I wrap up, I want to kind of go back to a comment you made earlier about putting together that kind of uh, collaboration team, um, you know, as kind of a, one of the, the key enablers really of, of getting this started. Uh, just kind of curious. I mean, who's involved in that team? Is it is it uh, people from Chep? It does it involve uh, the customers as well? Just trying to get a sense of you know how that team comes together, who's represented, and and what are the the main role and responsibility of that team? 
Well, I should say that first of all, uh, both supply chain team are working very closely together because as we, we said before, collaboration is a long way and we need to be engaged. So to be engaged, we need to have team 100% engaged. So globally, if we talk about uh, a European K account, for example, okay, but we need to, into bracket, to send them our collaboration program, what we have, uh, what we have already experienced in terms of collaboration with other customers. And we ask the customer to, to dedicate to, to dedicate a specific team in each country working with uh, their counterparts at shape level in order to work closely and very very quickly as well because it takes time to, to collaborate with and once each team has been built so we ask the customer to to build a european a european team by region or by country it depends i remind you that we are managing 22 countries so it's not so it's so easy so uh, we have a peop at CHEP level, we have people dedicated in each country to work with, the customer, with their counterpart at, country, at the customer side. And my role is to manage all the team and to ensure that in each country we are doing the same way. We are 100% uh, engaged, we have already a result. And if, if we have some blockers, whatever the side is out, so it's the same side, then my role is to ask the customer to be involved more, shape as well to the, the country managers to be focused on collaboration. Because at CHEP, we are as well convinced that collaboration is a strong role as a partner. With. We want to be. We want to be. Great. We well, have a I... lot of many, a lot of parties involved. Great. I mean, I think, um, you know, I, I think obviously part, part of that engagement is, is uh, you know, ongoing communication, uh, obviously, to, um, you know, make sure that uh, these programs are moving uh, eff effectively forward. And, and of course, when any kind of issues or, or uh, problems come up to, you know, be able to overcome them, uh, you know, quickly and, and efficiently. So, you, you know, as a way to uh, wrap up, I mean, what advice would you give to to shippers that, that are interested in, in in transportation collaboration? I mean, what what's what's kind of the first steps or first steps they should take? Yeah. So first of all, I should I, I should say, yeah, well, as we have already said, sorry, but once more, they, they need to to be convinced that collaboration can bring them additional savings or additional service level. I should I should say, and uh, and as well that first. They have to know their flows, but I'm quite sure that each company do know their flows, and they know the, their their empty lanes. They are convinced most of the supply chain guys knows that they can improve their supply chain. And if yes, if they are uh, if they trust, if they are convinced, they can they can um, ask their uh, either their supplier or or their three PL. Why not? Because we always collaborate. Uh, is with 3PL at a, at a European level because they manage flows, trucks, and so on. And sharing our flows most of the time brings brings savings and improvement in service level. So be convinced that this can be feasible. Savings we can demonstrate to to anyone that we each time we we get savings. And uh, and uh, most of the time, select the, the the best company able to provide them uh, these uh, these different opportunities. Great, Frederick. Um, you know, as I always say uh, uh, on these programs, you know, we, we always manage to scratch the surface. And uh, um, you know, on this topic, I'm sure we could continue talking for another hour or two on on uh, your various aspects yeah. of uh, transportation collaboration, but. You know, this has been a great start to the conversation. Um, so I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule, especially uh, on, on an afternoon, uh, to uh, share your thoughts and perspective on this topic. Uh, it, it's always a pleasure to share uh, our passion on, uh, on on collaboration. So it's really it's really a pleasure. Great, and and thank you for those of you that joined us today. And um, if you are joining us on demand, watching this program on demand, and you do have a question for uh, Frederick. You can find this episode on TalkingLogistics.com and, and post a question or a comment there. And I'm sure Frederick will be uh, you know, happy to respond via that platform. So with that, thank you very much for uh, joining us today on Talking Logistics and look forward to seeing a future episode.
Have a great day. Yeah, okay. We wish better. Okay, thanks a lot for your time. Bye-bye.